So welcome back to part four of our D&D puzzle adventure. My fellow YouTubers are within this mysterious mansion. We have already solved a couple of puzzles. That with the black and white door that was revolving around the chess pieces or the chessboard. And we have partially solved the puzzle with the statues of the older woman and the older man and part of the lyrics. Now we have entered the kitchen and Scald has fed the cat and as he fed the cat, Clink seen on the magical chalkboard that the phrase before you go and play outside is written on top of the chalkboard with a check mark that says feed the cat. What would we like to do next? Okay, I so feel like the obvious thing is the garbage, right? And then what what else is actually in the, the kitchen that we're seeing? Um, so you've got a uh, a couple of wash basins. You've got a um, uh, off to the right. You've got a lot of different utensils and things of that nature. You've got the chalkboard. You've got some old wooden kegs that appear to be dry, and then you've got the pantry and the trash can. And if you're to look out the window, you see a bright sunny day. All right. Is there an unopened door to the right? Correct. Uh, to the far right or to the east is a door. Okay, so I'm going to just quick kind of poke through the trash to see if there's anything of interest before uh, checking the door. Uh, there is indeed. As you start rooting through the trash uh, crank, you find a gray crank. So this, this is a crank that is very much similar to the other ones. It is gray, and at the end of it is like a globe or an orb, and it appears to be a miniature thunderstorm going on inside of that uh, little globe at the end of this crank. Well, we brought a uh, dear old Jack with us, so uh, you want to just pop that bad boy in? Clack, Clank looks at the crank and kind of points at it and then just makes the sound of like uh, a low thunderstorm and then just kind of looks around the room. <laughs> I'm hearing nothing but good things coming from this. <laughs> you, you, you also have a puppet on your hand still. Yeah, what do you yeah. think about this, Cotter? Well, it sounds like perfect storm, dum-dum, if you know what I mean. Then let's, then let's do it. <laughs> Um, you'll have to have somebody else do that. We're occupied, remember? I'm controlling you. Uh, I feel like I'm controlling you. That's right. <laughs> uh, Clank point, points at both of them and says, Dum Dum. <laughs> <laughs> uh, who has, who has the Jack in the Box? I would, I'll say I'll have it because I was the last one holding it before we Right. We took off, yeah. I, I I just... I hand you the crank, uh, and I just say, Hi, Bryce! Uh, I I agree. Well, maybe um, we'll save this one for when we actually need it. Uh, Clank nods enthusiastically. <laughs> sure thing! <laughs> I'm gonna message uh, Scald. I'll cast message on him, and I tell him, um, I, I stand back to kind of whisper it so that it's out of earshot of Barney. <laughs> mm -hmm. And it's like, we need to trick him and get the dummy into the trash can and remove it from his hand. Um, I Message is the one that allows you to message you back, right? I believe so. Yeah, okay. I just uh, message back. Like I look over at you with this like like half smile <laughs> and I message you back, don't worry. I got this. <laughs> and then I look at uh, at Barney and I go, you know, I uh, I heard that only cool people put dummies in that trash can. <laughs> <laughs> and I give you like a big smile, like <laughs> look over at Severus and I'm like. <laughs> And an awkward thumbs up. Yeah, okay. Maybe maybe if you put Carter in the trash can, he'll be able to uh, help us find something else. There might be something else other than this crank in there. Yeah, Carter, you're small. You can you can squeeze into tight spaces. You can be useful, right? It, it spins its head around and looks at you. Apparently, you're small, too. Yeah, but you're smaller. I'm not here to do your heavy work, dum-dum. I'm the brains it's, it's, of it's the It's not operation. heavy work, it's light work. Don't worry. 
I'm the brains of the operation. I, I don't know. I, I'm feeling you right now. You seem pretty hollow to me. Not uh, much between the ears. Uh, you should show me a little bit more respect than them. Make a wisdom saving throw. <laughs> uh, 14. All right. Uh, you almost feel inclined to show him some more respect, but you fight through it. <laughs> Barely. <laughs> you know, that, uh, that tie just doesn't go well with your clothes either. That's okay. I, I sense your inner struggles, Dum Dum. It won't be why, like Why don't you just, I don't know, stick them in the trash can just to like look down there for us? I'll, uh, you don't have to I'll take them try off. and take them off. <laughs> uh, another wisdom saving throw, please. <laughs> uh, seven. Uh, you second guess that. That would not be a good idea, Dum Dum. Keep yeah, going. you know, on second thought, guys, maybe you guys should uh, start looking around for some other useful things around here. I, I just look at Torak for a second and just go and look back at uh, Barney. And I walk over and I grab him by the wrist yeah. and, like, shake the dummy. I'm like, look here, you little shit. I'm going to grab, him, grab him and just push him up backwards. <laughs> uh, I, don't, I don't even know what to do right now. <laughs> Uh, you tell me this never came um, up. <laughs> let's let's do uh, opposing athletics checks, maybe. Alrighty. Sure. Um, uh, yeah. Um, but uh, Scald and Turok, whichever one of you are doing it, uh, you have advantage because you're helping each other. Okay. And uh, Bonswan, you just have to roll normally. That's a fourteen for me. Add a D four as the ventriloquist dummy gives you guidance. <laughs> oh, perfect. Uh, oh. <laughs> Woo! Uh, that not, is a whopping total of 18. I'm right. not going to roll this on the desk because it's going to fuck up the microphone. But, okay, hell yeah. That's going to be a 22. All right. Yeah. Um, <laughs> you five. struggle and they... No. <laughs> <laughs> and the dummy is off of your hand. And you kind of feel like you've been in a cloud for the last few minutes or so. Uh, where am I? <laughs> and I will mage hand the dummy and then dump it straight into the trash. Okay. Uh, it is in the trash can. <laughs> what did we learn today, Barney? I, I learned that you guys uh, think that uh, that thing can't be useful. I'm willing to bet that the good old uh, the good old Carter could help us out. I'm willing to bet. Mm -hmm. Maybe we try it on actual dummy. <laughs> 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 we know where he li We know where he lives now, so we can come get him if we need his help later. He lives amongst his people, absolutely. <laughs> All right, I I, I check the uh, the door to the right to see if it's like a place to dump out the trash. Maybe um, you crack open the door to see if there is an outside, and there is, and you see what looks like a outdoorsy patio area, as such. Oh, so I, do I see this massive? hole you do so out here you see what looks like to be a well in one corner there is a ladder that is on top of let's say this is like an eight foot retainer wall and there is a ladder pressed up against it and then in the far corner is this large enormous crater and it looks to be like some types of um, vegetable clippings or garbage that is along the outside of it all right clank looks at ba barney and then grabs the trash can <laughs> and just starts running towards the, uh, <laughs> the giant hole. Alright. Uh, you are at the giant hole. Alright. Is, is Barney gonna do anything? Bonswan, I, I think? You know, I feel so bad through, you know, he's, he's a stand you know, he's not the worst person around. He's just doing his own thing. <laughs> does he really need to be subjected to be thrown into the void? Yes. Yes, he does. Uh, well, uh, I, uh, Clank you know, pauses and says, "I'm the brains of the operation." And then he throws the uh, he upends the garbage pan okay. into the trash. All right, uh, you watch uh, as... But, as that's happening. I, I want to like I want to grab a piece of trash, uh, cast light on it, and throw it down to see how far this thing goes. Okay. Um, all right, uh, Clank, you are able to successfully. Dump the trash over the side. Uh, Bonswan, you cast light and you get an object, let's just say a carrot that was thrown out. And you watch as that light goes around and you also see Cotter just going. 
<laughs> as it sits down into the darkness. And then up coming from that, you see the large gaping mouth of a purple worm coming up to eat this garbage <laughs> on its way up. <laughs> Ah! <laughs> and you just feel the entire ground starting to shake. And those of you that are still in the kitchen can start hearing the glasses and all the silverware just shake. Well, uh, <laughs> I'm, I'm glad I didn't go down there as well. I would have been warm food. Uh, Clank looks at this happening. He says, remove the pieces from the game. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, and then just Clank uh, takes the empty garbage can and walks back and puts it where it was. Okay. All right. Um, and uh, uh, Bon Swan Barney going back in as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So as the two of you go back into the kitchen, looking back, you just see this large purple worm coming out, kind of just uh, surfaces a little bit and then sinks back down into the hole. Uh, those of you that are still in the kitchen... Looking over, you hear the sound of chalk hitting a chalkboard. You see a check mark that says, take out the trash. You have two tasks completed. Uh, out of how many? Uh, there are still three check boxes remaining. Okay. Well, I, one of them is obviously I, I, do the dishes, so. Yeah. I take my hand and I put it on Barney's shoulder and says, you are much better than a wand, my friend. <laughs> You know, I'll, I'll gladly accept that. Thank you. Thank you, dear friend. A dragon ate my home! <laughs> <laughs> let's uh, let's do the dishes. <laughs> All right. Upon completion, a third check mark. Do the dishes. Okay. And maybe we set the table mm -hmm. in the room. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's do it. Setting the table, a fourth check mark appears. Set the table. There's one check box remaining. Is there anything particularly messy or dirty left? In this area, not really, no. Mm. Uh, Clank wanders over to the barrel and uh, kind of knocks on the barrel. Uh, it seems to be hollow and empty. We didn't check upstairs yet either. There's still like all those other rooms too. Maybe yeah. we need to fill the barrels. Where? Oh, well, there's a well outside, right? That's mm. true. Make yourself useful. <laughs> no, okay. I can actually just you. Can I use shape water to just like pull the water out of the well and put it into the barrel until it's full? Absolutely. So, who wants to hold the door open for Scald as he does this? Anyone? I'll do it. All right. So you got the door open and Scald is uh, working your uh, magic, and you just have a stream of water going from the well and into the barrels. And after a little bit of time, you switch and you fill the other one, and the barrels are now full, and you hear the dripping sounds of water as it appears that one of them has been damaged. But nothing happens to the chalkboard. Uh, maybe uh, maybe one of the chores is uh, clean up your room, so uh, maybe we've got to go upstairs. Uh, Skald, you do remember seeing a broom in the closet? In here? In the pantry, correct. In the pantry. Oh, okay, cool, yeah. I, I'll, I'll go grab it and just start sweeping. Okay. Just start cleaning up, sweeping up the floor. Okay. Um, you do so. Uh, the floor is actually fairly clean already. Um, so mm. nothing happens to the chalkboard. Well, let's go find some dirt, maybe. Maybe the area outside next to the hole, since that was the only, like, really dirty part. Mm. Go sweep all that garbage into the <laughs> hole. Uh, you do so, and you hear the ground starting to rumble next to you. I'm going to step back a little bit i'm gonna keep sweeping but i'm gonna step back All once right. it starts uh, to get intense you get the area swept up fairly well at least uh you feel that it is and you see this purple worm just come out of the hole just uh make out this ghastly sound and just start looking around on a swivel <laughs> can i roll an animal handling check <laughs> to uh i thought you would never ask <laughs> <laughs> To pet him. <laughs> like all, I, that's literally one of the things on my character sheets is that I like animals. Oh my god, what if Cotter took control of the purple worm? Despite, oh my god. <laughs> Cotter's um, on the back of the purple worm. Let's go, dum dum. That's him. That's, <laughs> that's, that's a 15. Uh, a 15 is pretty good. Uh, actually, I set the DC at 40, so you're nowhere close. Uh, 
I don't think that's possible for me. I have a plus four. I looked at your character sheet. You're half away. Uh, <laughs> um, you, you try to soothe it, and you see there is no way. This this beast is just like... Rawr. <laughs> cool. I'm just going to nod and just say, understandable. Have a good day. Um, and go back into the kitchen and just be like, yeah, there's nothing else to do out there, guys. <laughs> good choice. That's him, dum dum. Oh, snakes. Um, mm -hmm. Clank looks at the broken barrel uh, and just says, uh, keep it together? Is there any uh, repairing supplies around here? You could probably scrounge up some things in the pantry if nobody has a mending spell. No duct tape. Didn't I, quite have nobody a... took mending? I unfortunately did not take mending. Because oh, mending's that's... cheating. And we're we're not cheaters here. Okay. <laughs> and tune in next time when we do a D D roundtable <laughs> on the cheating cantrips of D D. <laughs> Good berry, etc. <cetera. laughs> yeah. Zork is kind of hungry, so he's going over uh, to the pantry and starts like taking food. Okay. Uh, you find to eat. you find something of particular interest. It looks like a uh, it looks like a package of. Gummy worms or jelly worms. Oh, yes. Jackpot. <laughs> <laughs> uh, they're absolutely delicious. I, I I share. I share. Okay. That's very nice of you. All right, fantastic. You have some some jelly. We call Torak. Them... You're as good a friend as any. <laughs> we call them uh, gummy worms here, but I know a lot of places call them jellies as well. A little chewy. Yeah. Grab it. Delicious. We should invest. I think we let's go investigate upstairs. All right. Before we do, real quick, d does it look like anything set out to be cooked? Mm. Like, is there like a is, is it just kind of like just random stuff? Nothing's really half prepared to be cooked or anything, right? Correct. There's. It doesn't look like anything is being prepared or like there um, anything is being ready for a meal. Or no. Okay. All right. Uh, Clank shrugs. Is the is the living room? Does it seem like? dirty like maybe around the fire like there's ashes and stuff on the ground maybe Ooh, there was one room there was one room that was all dusty but i don't remember what room it was let's say just take the broom with us just in case mm -hmm. all right who has the broom i guess i had it okay but unless someone else wants to take it i can just carry it that's all no right. problem okay um yeah uh none of the areas are particular dusty or dirty that would warrant um, okay. entire uh, chore of sweeping in this Something area. I also just realized, which granted Scald would probably not point this out, but we just like we still have the other half of the piano puzzle in the works right now too. Mm. <laughs> but yeah. Mm. Correct. Well, let's go yeah. see what's I'm gonna go Scald's gonna go upstairs and just see what is up there anyway. Yep. Okay. Upstairs. Yeah, so, uh, as you walk by, uh, you see both of the statues awkward awkwardly placed behind the piano. And then continue upstairs. So they were moved back. Okay. No, uh, or did you did you move the uh, the statue of the man? I don't think yeah, you did. we were the gonna man. not do it because we were talking about the piano. But then when you said that we were missing half the melody, we said okay, we'll move it back anyway. Okay. So I guess the man is back where it was. But I don't think we yeah. do one again. And so you still have a pair of glasses then. I guess that's what my. It's no, on, I, both the glasses the are on the statues. I think we just haven't looked through it yet. Like we moved it back to the window. And I don't think it anyone's is. looked through it yet. Not to be a DM meta gamer, but is that something you wish to do on your way up? Way up. Yeah. Sure. Sure. Yeah. But I imagine someone would. <laughs> or we can continue upstairs. Up to you. Uh, I I think uh, Torok might uh, touch the statue and maybe try to carry it around and see if it, if it can see anything <laughs> in the room. As you go into that Torok, you are able to see outside. Uh, there's a lot of children outside playing, and then it kind of fades away. And you see another half of a music. You see a musical script that is written into the window that you are looking out of, as mm. part of oh, the statue. There's, there's gibberish here. <laughs> gibberish indeed. Uh, being the musically inclined of the party, I'll uh, I'll go ahead and look at it. And um, once I have the two pieces of the melody, I'll go. Okay. Well, now that my uh, now my hands aren't tied anymore, I guess I'll play it. Yeah. <laughs> Musically inclined, you have one level of bard. <laughs> hey, that's more than most. 
All right, give me a performance. I, I went to night class, okay? <laughs> give me a performance check. All righty. Uh, there's a whopping 10 total. <laughs> you are just not hitting the song Bad <laughs> Romance very well. <laughs> I'm, I'm fat fingering it. <laughs> My hand's still sweaty from that puppy, you know. Does anyone else have any type of musical knowledge or <laughs> any type of? Uh, uh, I, I can, I can play to, a drum. I can attempt to do performance. All right. You know what? I'll I'll help you out. I'll I'll give you some guidance. So I'll, I'll give you a D4. Clank is trained in performance as well, but I'm not sure if piano is the thing. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, technically okay. speaking, a piano is a percussive instrument. Yeah. So I'll look through the the gentleman and get the rest of the notes. Okay. And then um, then look through the, the woman's eyes. Pretty much, I'm writing all the notes down just so I have like a little music sheet. Put it in yes. front of me and then attempt to okay. play it. Sure. Okay. So that is, and then guidance is a D4, right? D4. Yeah. So, okay. Whoop. I thought I had a D4 out. Give me a sec. So just with that, so it'll be. 14 plus, or excuse me, uh, 15 plus, whatever's on the D4, that will just be a 1, so that'll be a 16. Okay. Um, you performed that very well. In fact, a, a few of you actually recognize that tune. There's a, uh, maybe it is a Lady Gaga song or something. You might have heard it before, the Golden Surgeon. But regardless, you are able to play the tune and the combination lock on the safe turns in a few directions and it opens. Oh, well done. And that was very nice. It's, it's like we've heard it before. Well, well, let's see what's in this uh, safe. All right. Um, whoever investigates the safe is going to find an olive drab colored crank. And on the end of it is going to be like, um, like little metal balls or like BBs. And they're going to be like, they're all magnetized and drawn into a single ball. But you can tell... Ooh. <laughs> uh oh. <laughs> I broke my pop filter. But you can tell that they're all part of the knob there. So uh, We've got two cranks. You want to try them out? Uh, as good as uh, any other time to do it. All right. So I will bring out the jack in the box. Um, I'm, the one I'm worried about is the, the stormy one. So I, I'm assuming we'll do this one last. Let, let's try this metal one. And. Are you putting the olive drab one in? Yeah. Okay. Uh, as you put that into the side of the jack in the box, it takes an an olive drab green appearance. And on the front of it, it says front toward enemy. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Let us... Uh, and then I will quickly be like, we're going to save this one for later. Um, and then I will get... You know, that reminds me of like a two-handed weapon, like a large greatsword. Some would call it a claymore, perhaps. <laughs> <laughs> Indeed. Let's let's see if the other one's uh, of a well, similar well, ilk. Yeah. Let's about the storm one. Right. And then I will just uh, plug in the storm crank. Uh, the storm crank, uh, the box turns to a very dark gray. And it's almost like you can see just like storm clouds that are rolling through it. And it lights up occasionally with what you would presume to be some type of lightning. Want to save this for a rainy day? Uh, well, sure yes. thing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So yeah, I uh, will plug it. Um, I'm assuming um, one result would be pretty shocking. So I will. Um, Whoa, let's just save these for later. <laughs> upstairs? Oh, let's go upstairs. Yeah. All right. You have adventured into the toy room and into the master bedroom but now you have six doors down the hallway all right uh clank's gonna say a high price uh and then he's gonna kind of scoot towards the doors mm -hmm. but then go very slowly actually no he's gonna stop looks into the room with the bed again okay all right what does the bed look like again uh, this looks like a master bedroom, so it is like the size of a queen-size bed. It looks like it would be like a parent's bedroom, if you will. Ah, okay. So I'm assuming that's not... that probably won't be on the chore we will. Okay, I leave. Uh, I'm just going to do an investigation check to see if there's any obvious uh, physical traps. Okay. Uh, coming up in the old hallway coming up here. 
Uh, and I'm just going to go basically up to the first set of drawers, just very, very softly, and just kind of look, just to make sure. Okay. Um, uh, and I got a six. <laughs> all right. Um, you f- don't find anything that seems to be trapped. You think that everything is fairly safe up to the point that you reach the first set of doors. Uh, Clank just looks back and shrugs. All righty. Well, time to open up these doors. Okay. Yep. Which door would we like to open first? Um, hmm. First one on the left, I guess. This We've one? Gotta open one. Sure. Yeah, yeah. why not? Yeah. Okay. We've got to open one first. Who's going in first? Probably me. All right. <laughs> As you go into this room, you see a pair of twin beds. They're a little bit smaller than normal with a cabinet that is in between them that is empty with the doors open off to your left is a closet door that is currently open and in this location the center right location of the room you see the marionette doll that is either calvin or theodore it has its back towards you and it looks like it is writing something on paper it has not noticed that you have entered the room good Calvin. It spins its head around and looks at you. Is that you, Theodore? Oh. Oh. What are you doing? He turns back around to the desk and he grabs a piece of paper that he's coloring on and he shows this to you. Oh, I I, I can't read. Uh, (laughs) It's it's Hide. Hide, get it done. Let's go. (laughs) And, And then the marionette runs and dives underneath the bed i'll uh i'll run to the closet <laughs> okay what are we doing i'll i'll, I'll try and bug torque uh tie with me in the closet <laughs> okay um, i join and yeah i will go a- attempt to hide also uh, um there's two beds right uh there's two beds there's an open cabinet and there's a closet i will uh, hide under one of the other beds I'm going to jump on one of the beds and pull the blankets over me. <laughs> so I'm just like in a ball with the blankets pulled <laughs> over me. <All> right. <laughs> Clank will uh, try to hide in the cabinet. All right. Um, you're able to hide in the cabinet. Um, those are really good hiding spots. Uh, Skull, make me a uh, stealth check, please. <laughs> Hell yeah. That's a 12. 12 is good. Um, as you all are in your hiding places, I'm imagining maybe looking out. You see this figure float through the wall, stop in the middle, looks around in all directions, and then floats through the other wall. That was that was a close one, Gek. <laughs> was that the ghost you didn't see earlier? Oh, yeah, totally. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's the one, I think. <laughs> Um, is that like a potential friend ghost or a scary ghost? <laughs> a well, dragon. Con- <laughs> 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 well, uh, considering considering uh, Theodore told us to hide, I'm willing to bet it's not the good persuasion. Theodore comes out from underneath the bed and then goes back and starts coloring on his desk again. Uh, well, gang, uh, there seems to be some mess in here, and it's the kids' room, so I'm willing to bet if we clean this room, uh, then we'll do all the chores. This room actually seems fairly clean. Well, screw me, invisible voice. (laughs) Um, what about the teddy bears on the ground? What are those? Um, they just seem to be, uh, probably, um... Actually, there's just part of the, the map that I drew. I <laughs> have no purpose. Uh, <laughs> you know, guys, I, I, I'm, I'm like, you know, ever since that <laughs> Muppet took over my brain, I've been seeing things. I don't know. Why didn't uh, you have the teddy bears ready? Clank, uh, <laughs> Clank gestures with his, uh, with his left hand and a purple knife uh, made out of flickering energy comes out of his hand. Uh, and he points to the uh, evil-looking doll that's drawing pictures, and he says, "Remove the pieces from the board." <laughs> <laughs> and he kind of just looks at everybody. Oh um, no, I, I think um, he's a friend. Hey Theo, are you? You're you're cool, right? What's going on? 
it turns around back to its desk and then turns around with this. But first, before it turns around, it looks at you, uh, Clank. Uh, Clank just does a just just like a little uh, thing, and it just poof just tip, disappears. <laughs> and he just Clank just opens up his mouth. It's like, <laughs> <laughs> and then it shows you this. So we got a knock it, on the, the H door with six monoliths and hold hands by the green bowling balls. Okay. Yeah, I'm gonna ask Theodore. Uh, Theodore, is that is that supposed to be the monolith that we saw outside? Okay. And uh, Theodore, is that specifically two people, or is it just people holding hands? Both? People holding hands? Okay. Uh, Clank, Clank points at one of the stick figures and says, Theodore? Alright. Hmm. You guys need to see that again later, let me know. What's What's the other marionette's name? Calvin. 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 Right. I'll I'll ask him. I'll say, where is Calvin? Uh, the marionette points to the obelisk drawing. He's in that big scary statue. Oh, did he get like, like turned into a puzzle, like the pie lady? Okay. Theodore, are you going to be joining us as we continue exploring around, or are you going to stay here? Stay here. <laughs> Join us. Join us. Okay. Oh, okay. Stay here. <laughs> <laughs> the uh, alrighty. Uh, the maybe we should uh, move on and let's see what else we okay. can find. All right. All right. Uh, where to next? Across the hall. Yep, go go up. All right, let me reveal that area for you. So you leave the room that you found Theodore in, and he accompanies you. By the way, the cat is no longer with you. It stayed downstairs. Okay. And, of course, uh, Cotter, the ventriloquist dummy, is gone. But you <laughs> enter this room. As you enter this room, there is a little bit of magic and mysteriousness to it. There is an open cabinet that is empty. There is a bed underneath, and then there's a closet to the right. But for the rest of it, this looks very familiar to you, Scald. In fact, this looks very similar to what a room or area that you may have grown up in as a 10-year-old. What would this room look like? <laughs> um, oh, no. <laughs> Scald is from, like, a pretty small farming village, so it's a pretty basic structure and room i imagine you know like wooden walls maybe you see the edge of the straw roof or you would if there was a window pretty simple in its design lots of like little wood figures around yeah just like basically what you picture when you picture like a simple like peasant's house basically there's also one other object in here that you recognize and looking over you see a fishbowl and there's a goldfish swimming about Oh, hell yeah. Um, <laughs> I immediately run over, like, for a moment, just looking like a super excited kid. I'm just like, oh my gosh, Gordon. And I use my shape water to, like, pull all the water and the fish out of the bowl. And then I stick my face in the water as it's in the <laughs> air and, like, start giving the goldfish little kisses. I'm like, Gordon. And I'm, like, talking in the water. So it's, like, bubbles and stuff going up. No, Gordon, it's been so long since I saw you. <laughs> Put him back in the fishbowl. I'm just like, I'm so, so sorry, Gordon. You know, I didn't mean for, I never meant to hurt you. Wait a second. Why is Gordon here? And I looked at the rest of the group and I'm like, why is this my childhood room? This is my pet goldfish. I, uh, uh. This room's a mess, by the way. There's cobwebs, dirt, and dust everywhere. Okay. I, uh. uh got a bit of an accident with him when I was a child, but. Zip. The fish kind of just like presses its face up against the glass as you're telling that story. <laughs> yeah, I just looked at him. And said, I'm sorry. I didn't. I did not have control over a lot of, of my magic. Young Genasi often get into all kinds of trouble. Let let alone one with a with dual parenthood such as myself. I didn't mean to boil you alive. It was a mistake. I'm sorry. 
Bloop. Gordon, if you can find it in your heart to forgive me, maybe we can be buds again, yeah? This one's about... Okay, you're fine. Um, I'm going to start, like, cleaning up the room, I guess, since it's so messy. It's dirty and dusty in here. If only you had a broom. I do have a broom. <laughs> oh, snap, you do. <laughs> I'm going to start using the broom. Okay. Uh, the room is clean. Perfect. Where to next? Oh, well, there are the rooms. Uh, this one? This yep. one? That one? Well, let's me reveal another area for you. Uh, you travel down the hallway and enter the next room, Torak. This mm. room looks very s familiar to you. It's dirty and dusty. It's got a few place, few things that are out of places with uh, a bed and a cabinet and a closet. But a lot of it looks very similar to maybe an area that you would have grown up in as a 10 year old or the equivalent thereof. What does this room look like? No, oh, it's a big tent. It has a lot of toy weapons around and some furs scattered around. It's the time when I was back at the tribe. And there's also an item in here and there's also an item in here that you find. It looks like a small kid-sized axe made of wooden bone. <gasps> oh, and grab that. This is the first axe that my mother gave me. It's That's broke pretty down cool. many years ago. Yeah. Uh, we're in the same size now. Huh. I can use it. <laughs> and kind of waves it around, smacks the bed. <laughs> Room cleaned. Very nice. <laughs> uh, so, so in Tarak's thunder, in in Torak's thunders, this room is fairly clean. So, but, <laughs> I just <laughs> hand Torak the broom. <laughs> okay, clean it a bit more. Yeah. Still a mess, but just a little bit less so. Where to next? Uh, let's buy door number three, and I'll open the other door. Uh, this one directly uh, below it. Yep. Uh, this room. Severus. You enter here. Uh, again, a few things out of place. There appear to be underneath the bed area, a cabinet, and a closet. But other than that, this is very similar to an area that you may have grown up in. What does this area look like? It probably looks like uh, floors made of just like stone, maybe more like an actual like a uh, castle structure. Um, there should be a desk there, probably with tons of different books. Um, a bed that's probably wooden, but really well kept. And yeah, uh, Cerberus steps in and a pit in his stomach hits. And um, what else does he see in there? Um, it does look out of sorts, probably a little bit dirtier or messier than you would have liked to have left it. Um, so there is that. But there is also a, a small doll that you find on the floor that it looks to be handmade, maybe of a uh, dragonborn. He picks it up, uh, hugs it, uh, puts it to his head, and then uh, looks at the party. Um, this was from my mother from a long time ago. Um, this shouldn't be here. Methinks that uh, someone's been spying on us in a creepy way. <laughs> and knows exactly what we've been doing. <laughs> what makes you think of that? Well, <laughs> I've got my guesses. Oh, okay. Yeah, um, my, what this room was is not there anymore. It, it was, uh, sometimes you make mistakes in life and make choices and uh, things become removed because of those choices. So. Let's uh, tidy this place up. I don't really want to be in here anymore. Um, do you keep the doll with you? Uh, yeah, he'll hold on to the doll and he'll take the, uh, I'll take the broom and uh, Mage Hand clean everything up with it. Okay. Um, on to the next room. Would you like to go to the, the top or the bottom room now? Top. Top, I guess. All right. Uh, this next room that you enter. Clink. As we enter this room, Again, with the exception of the bed and the cabinet and um, the closet, a lot of similarities to an area that you may have grown up in as a 10 year old, whether that be indoors or outdoors. What does this area look like? Uh, it kind of looks like a, like a kind of like a corner of an old, like abandoned warehouse. There's like, you know, a bunch of just empty crates and a small bed of, uh, kind of like piled up uh oh it looks like the uh burlap sacks were probably used for transporting and stuff and so it's just kind of like a kind of like an area kind of set up like a almost like a mini maze to sort of hide the bed in the corner 
And as, as you go and walk about reminiscing, you also come across a strange object from your from your past. You find a small clockwork owlbear. Such a wonderful thing. Did uh, uh, did someone make that for you? No. <laughs> Holy dramatic pauses. <laughs> <laughs> it's at this point that Theodore goes and dives underneath your bed. A dragon! Uh, uh, Clank will jump into one of the empty crates. Okay. I run in the closet. Closet. Uh, under the bed. Um, I'll jump in another one of the empty crates. <laughs> okay. Um, as you all gather hiding places once again this figure floats through the room looks around the place and then floats back out traveling east oh. Theodore how do you know that she's always coming that doesn't answer the anything at all the brains of the operation <laughs> <laughs> I think I like Kenku now. That's hilarious. <laughs> well, I'll tell you what, gang. If the next room isn't mine, I'm going to be pissed. <laughs> uh, Clank kind of gestures towards the broom uh, and then just kind of tidies up. Uh, it, you know, pretty much the floor is like, you know, just kind of tidies up the floor. Okay. All right. This place is tidied up. Uh, on to the next room. All right. Uh, you travel down south into the next room. And again, with the exception of underneath the bed, the cabinet, and the closet, this is a room that looks very similar to what you grew up with, Bonswan. What does this area look like? It looks like a uh, it looks like a, a tavern room. It, it looks like an inn because I grew up in uh, a, a port side tavern, and you can maybe smell a little bit of the the salty air, and you can see that it's just wooden and. Not necessarily ramshackle, but it's definitely not luxurious by any means. And also, as you kind of walk through reminiscing about a part of your life that was so long ago, you also find an item that is of particular interest, and that is a treasure map. <gasps> I, I run over all giddy and I hold it up. Gang! This is a, a treasure map! Treasure! That's awesome! Did you? Was this also an item from your childhood? Yeah, I, I remember it was, it was left here by someone in the tavern, and they they told me like when I grow up I can go searching for it, and you know that led me to my sense of wonderlust and wanting to go out and explore the world and do crazy things. Do you find a treasure? <laughs> no. But I, I think it was more of the spirit of the thing. I think it was more of the the chase rather than the destination, I suppose. I, I vote next adventure, assuming we ever get out of this one. <laughs> we follow that map. What Maybe. is that? <laughs> uh, I look at the map and I pull out my forgery kit and I start trying to make a uh, a copy of it. <laughs> <laughs> um... I'm not sure what that would be. Let's let's have fun with that. Um, would that be sleight of hand? Would that be performance? Would that just be toolkit plus dexterity? Toolkit plus dexterity. Right. What you got, Clank? Give me a roll. Uh, toolkit plus dexterity would be sixteen. Ah, yeah. You quickly uh, copy it almost exactly. That's awesome. That's awesome. <laughs> That's what I said. <laughs> dumb dumb <laughs> <laughs> all right uh do you tidy up the place before you leave or no yeah i'll uh, i'll clean it up uh, I, I, I know how they used to be they don't like messy rooms and all that okay all right uh that has been done um is there anyone that did not take the item that they found um from their past i've definitely got gordon the goldfish like <laughs> right. my arm like the fish bowl <laughs> I, yeah, I'm definitely okay. pocketing my map. So I, assume, <laughs> I assume that everybody has everything. So where would we like to go next? Let's 
go check the blackboard in the kitchen, yeah? All right. No. As we're walking down, I ask everybody, um, are these all items you guys lost as uh, you grew older? Hmm. Sure thing! Mine broke. Lost? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, you know, I, 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 I can't even remember where my original map went. Who knows? I have a strange feeling these aren't real. I mean, uh, are we real? Well, I would hope so. This well, uh, this doll shouldn't be here. Yeah, Theodore, are you real? <laughs> See, Theodore is real. I, I hold up the goldfish and I'm like, Gordon, you're real, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he says he is. <laughs> <laughs> I've never, I've never heard a fish meow before. Oh, that's interesting. The cat, the cat comes cat. back in the area. <laughs> All right, well, let's let's go check out this. Uh, see if we completed our task. Okay. As you come down the stairs, if you remember the very front door to the right of it was a window that brought in an abundance of sunlight, where you could see outside, where there's children playing in the park. That light is no longer there. It, there is a darkness that is outside. Mm. Took us a while to clean it. Yeah, let's uh, let's uh, let's hope nothing uh, too ominous or scary about that. <laughs> Continue back to the kitchen. Yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> as you go back to the kitchen, looking at the chalkboard, uh, the chalkboard is now complete with the last and final check mark being before you can go play outside, and the final one being clean your room. Um, as you walk through the rest of these rooms that used to be bright with uh, sunshine coming through the windows, that is no longer the case. Mm -hmm. I guess our only uh, option is to go through the door. Yeah. Time to go out and play. Time to go outside and play. So that is going to do it for this episode. We will continue <laughs> with the finale in the next one. So be sure to stay tuned for the final puzzle, the final encounter, and what lies beyond the door of a mansion. So we'll see you next time.